Holler if you hear me, and welcome to tonight's edition of Art Uncensored. It is the top of the hour, 10 p.m. Eastern. We are here and together because we are getting on this, uh, this my personal road to WrestleMania. Yes, it is the 40th anniversary of WrestleMania coming up on April 6th and 7th. And do not forget, ladies and gentlemen, what else is there today? Well, today of all days is a very important date because it is the official anniversary of Good old WrestleMania 3. Yes, the body slam heard around the world. That major event that took the all-time great uh, of, of greatness of Hulk Hogan and brought it into the stratosphere with uh, him doing that thing you thought that was impossible. Something that nobody could have done. And remember, at least in that storyline there, the Andre the Giant had never been beaten. So him turning into an enemy against Hogan. Oh my God, what's going to happen? The rear resistant force and the movable object. Hello, also to new friends in the chat here. We've got Alec Baldwin's finger. Hello to you. Nice to see you here straight from the world. Uh, Geeks and Gamers and uh, the Fellowship. Yes, hail to the 199 and hail to the Fellowship right there. Along with Nerd Slap and Maltz Maldi. Everybody going in here. Yes, it's a GCA raid. Yes, our friends over at GCA raid. I'd like to thank our Discord server for coming over here and bringing all these uh, nice new friends and also to one mr aj nash a new subscriber straight from the middle of today's friday night tights who left a nice little effusive comment right there on today's video of me singing the praises of the opening night box office results of godzilla x kong the new empire and remember that is the biggest opening thursday night box office that any of these monsterverse movies have had since godzilla 2014. And on top of that, this movie does not look like one I would actually fall asleep in the middle of, which I did when watching Godzilla 2014. And I'd like to remind you, I brought a quintuple uh, Americano with me into the theater and still dozed off. That's not good. That would be like, uh, let's say, let's say I went and did all of the cocaine backstage at a Motley Crue concert and still proceeded to be congested. That, 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 that's not how that's supposed to work. Such was the effect of the boredom factor of first watching Godzilla 2014 all the way back in that day. That hello, hello, hello to Nerd Slap right there. Whoop, whoop, see you in there. We've also got Nick coming in since, well, we have got a big moment of wrestling right here. And with him being probably the biggest wrestling fan we've got, there is Nick right there. Well, hello, hello to Nick, our original subscriber, our original moderator, our original channel member. Here he is, everybody. This is him off from work. Yes, 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 yes. Let's all celebrate that. Let's all celebrate him getting a raise this week. And let's all celebrate him coming on in, coming on in, coming on in right here hot on this weekend. Now, let's go and make this all a great, great big week and fun for him. And let's also make this the best damn stream we'll ever have for all the new people in here to make sure this is the reason why they should stick around this channel and why the tonight also is me up to now past 3,200 subs. That's good. That's good. That's good. Hello to the GCA. Hail brother. Celebrations for everyone. The GCA right there himself, I'm assuming. There we are. Oh, yes. It's truly a GCA raid. So let's all, all, all get on in here and celebrate. Yes. Yeah, celebrate good times. Uh, come on. And who else is going to celebrate with us? But the man, the myth, the legend himself, Hulk Hogan. I love this whole energy. The energy is so hype and I love it. Well, if you think that there's energy, brother, you better come in here. You've come to the right place. Why is that? Because you think that there is any other channel worth watching tonight? I don't think so. You think there's any other channel worth putting down your time, your attention, your affection, your direct support? I don't know if you have a screw loose or if you just don't know what quality is. Now, what have you got to say right here to all my little Hulkamaniacs? You better be coming to this channel. You better be making this channel great. You better be making this channel explode because Luke the Duke right here, he's got a goal. He's got an aspiration. He's got a dream, the impossible dream to reach the impossible star. And what is that impossible star? This year, he's got a goal to reach 10,000 subscribers. And remember, there's only a quarter of a year that has passed. What means he's got um, still time to reach that 10K sub goal. And that's something for all the little Hulkamaniacs out there to get into. Why is that? And remember, the three things you need to do. What are those three things? They actually now have an addendum. It's four things. Train, say your prayers, eat your vitamins, and 
follow Luke the Duke right here, right now. Because let me tell you something, brother. There ain't no other channel that is worth your time and worth your energy and worth your attention than right here, right then, right now. And will Mult Malty, yeah, of course, you know, Wolf Pack, Wolf Pack for Life, or little boy Kevin Nash in there dancing around. Uh, remember when he would wear the do rags walking into the arena, especially when the more big name people started coming into the Wolf Pack? Conan, well, Conan always looked that way, so Conan fit. Or at least when people started paying attention to Conan, he looked the part there with the flannel shirt with only the top button and the do rag. Kevin Nash. A guy who grew up in suburban Michigan, like a suburb of Detroit, Dearborn, went to a Catholic school and all that, was a big old goofy looking uh, basketball player and all that in his high school days, and then into University of Tennessee. Yeah, that guy, that's like a, if you get your parents to try to go with you to you know a rap concert, it's out of place. And yes, Maldi, Sting from the Rafters of, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it was the arena where the Bulls played when they won all those titles in the NBA in the 90s. Famously, the first time Sting comes down from the Rafters, it was like right after I think they won the, the uh, NBA title in uh, 97. And as he's coming down, you see him going in between the two most recent championship banners for the Bulls as he rubbed, as he whooped his way down and whooped ass on everybody, except, of course, you know, Hogan and Bischoff running away all scared. And all that great time of uh, the, all those times where they'd bring in their commission and all the going and say, we want a new contract for a new match, Sting. We want with this guy. And he would just tear them up, and he wouldn't say anything. He would just point to a side of the crowd saying, Hogan, Hogan. God, That's his way of saying Hogan. He wants Hogan. He wants Hogan. That's what he wants. Hulk Hogan. Oh, yeah. And now here, we take what we want. And at the job, we want the go, sucker. Hulk Hogan, we come up for you. Yes. But Booker T, what happens when a strong black man's almighty ebony strength overwhelms him and he proceeds to drop an end bomb on live TV? To the point where, yeah, and although sadly, if you go to Peacock, if you have Peacock Premium, you get the WWE Network access. And unfortunately, yeah, they now have it replaced with sucker. It's like, but remember, in the WCW, it was owned by Turner. It was like when you would watch movies with cursing on TNT or on TBS, and they would dub over all the cursing. Like, I vividly remember, besides Yippie Kaye, Mr. Falcon, in the, uh, T in the Turner dubs of the Die Hard movies, there was also, in the Back to the Future films, if you're watching on there, anytime that you would hear Michael J. Fox yell, holy shit, it became holy cheese. Uh, and, and at least that's what I heard whenever I'd watch it and would laugh my head off. That's why, no, I'd rather just go to Blockbuster and get it there. And, uh, well, Christopher wants to go and see, well, we should all just oil up. Well, remember, yeah, uh, as I say, my channel is a little Ellis Island, you could say, for everybody. Everybody coming in here. And th that would include either Hulk Hogan or uh, that would include Booker T. Even Goldust, although Goldust then might eventually want to uh, off uh, offer uh, Booker a bite of his wiener. Because I was still watching wrestling regularly during the tag team of Goldust and Booker T. And yes, remember that. Uh, if you just have me have a drink of your Slurpee, I'll give you a bite of my wiener. Hey, back up off me, man. Oh, but come on. Come back, baby, please. Mind games. Come on, mind games. Or if you're also the other moments of Goldust, including WrestleMania 12, the Hollywood backlot bra, if you remember uh, Vince McMahon announcing it, where for whatever reason, the word brawl just confounds his uh, diction. And the gimmick of the match is that it ends not with a formal pinning or anything, but with Roddy Piper simply taking off Goldust's tights and he's wearing women's lingerie. And there's an interview that Goldust did where there's a segment where they talk about the whole process of that match and how it was his idea to go and have women's lingerie under his tights. So he went down to Fred Fredericks of Hollywood in LA and there he got like a men's size 14 uh, whole set with the bustier and the stockings and all of that. No, there, that. And the sad thing is, well, remember, this is L.A. Yeah, they would cater to someone of that size, whether it be just someone like Lizzo or maybe just some big brawny dude who likes to go and drag like that. You know, some guy, I don't know, whatever he, maybe he's like a drag performer or he's just some dude and then he goes out and drag to like, you know, clubs in West Hollywood in his free time. But that's a matter of Fredericks of Hollywood knowing that they've got that kind of business. 
It's like what I do with my artwork where, well, if I know there's this convention that's going to have these kind of guests there, I'm going to have, you know, uh, if there's Power Rangers guests at a con I'm going to be going to, I'll have Power Rangers artwork there for sale or, you know, with wrestlers or, you know, Yuma Con, as it happens in downtown Detroit every November, then I'm going to have all the best and brightest uh, anime and manga artwork out there. And what else is there? Well, today, today, let's go in on the focus on what is tonight. And we've got Hulk Hogan, as seen right here, vividly in living color, ripping the shirt right there. What's that smell? It's Dookie. 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 And what's the main thing we've got? Well, that's what we did in color earlier tonight. And what we've got right here, this is what we're going to be putting pen to paper right here, right now. Yes, I did also put the detail of Hulkster up over the bandana. And that is what was left of his hair behind him because uh, tastefully covering his purple nurples. Yes. I'm, as you all know from what we have done so far from all the new people here, my channel is very, very, very tasteful. That's why almost every stream I do, I have to go and click on the manual review thing on YouTube Studio so that the ch that the, my streams can be monetized or try to get them monetized. That's why I say I survive or even thrive based off your direct support. So if you like this channel and you want to see it grow besides the gr circulating to get the channel up to 10,000 subs, the thing you can do right here right now is to drop in a super chat or become a channel member today, or gift memberships out there. And don't forget about the link to my art store right there, where you can go and either see the artwork I've got and make a purchase, or you can even commission me. Or don't forget, the very first thing in my art store are donations. So when you donate to my store, that money goes straight to me instead of to uh, the Google Goliath. So say, if you're not a fan of Google, well, then that way you can stand in defiance of them is to go and drop a donation right into the store right there. But yes, uh, considering that we already have a Hulk Hogan sex tape, and he was best known as a guy who, as family-friendly as he was, he would always be there covered in baby oil, throttling other men in nothing but boots, wristbands, and his underwear. We really should have seen him having a sex tape coming. Between that and the TV movie pilot for that show he was on, Thunder in Paradise, and the time between quitting the WWF and before defecting a WCW, where famously the opening is him having this marriage of convenience with this woman. And yes, there is like, there, there's a sex scene where they're, they're under sheets, but we can hear Hogan making noises. So you already got a preview of Hulk Hogan's uh, or O face and his O sounds even before the sex tape. Yeah. So uh, him, you know, laying the pipe to another man's wife, except look at that DJ that he was, uh, whose wife that Hogan was with, Bubba the Love Sponge. Does that look like a dude who's really got that virility? Uh, I, I don't think so. That, that guy, I would say uh, Jim Sterling would probably be in better shape and more, you know, virile to uh, pleasure a woman, any woman, than Bubba the Love Sponge. Don Imus has been dead for several years, and his corpse would do a better job at pleasing a woman than Bubba the Love Sponge. Yes, the, the vinegar strokes, as Malt Maldi is referring them to. I'm just taking this off because you see this right here? This is something I actually got myself uh, at a Walmart. Yeah, the WWE Superstars line, they have a like, different series of them that are only available. And, uh, well, the right there, you see... The thing is, with this, it actually comes with different pieces because you see the glasses on our Hollywood right here? Well, besides the NWO belt that was removable, you can also take off the sunglasses if you feel like it, brother. Right there. You want to look into the eyes of Hollywood. You want to look at him, all of my NWO lights. But then you can also take off that. And the weight training belt, if you feel like just slapping the hell out of your opponent. And yes, you can also go and do the... If you feel like that. Because he would still do that with uh, his, uh, in his, as, his, as Hollywood Hogan. If you remember the... Except sometimes he would wear the NWO shirt. And other times he would wear the shirt that said Hollywood Rules. And most of the time, it wasn't even like a full shirt. It was like... Something that he would tear up. He wouldn't just cut off the sleeves of our shirts anymore. It would be something where it would just like dangle over him like a towel where he cut a hole in for his head. And then he would go and rip it off when walking into the ring. Like at Starcade 97, 
when you see him making his entrance and he's got voodoo child playing and he's ripping the shirt and all that. Mm -hmm. And I uh, see there. Uh, and uh, Hulk, the Hulk Hogan, it's Hulk Hogan taking it all off to get ready for another sex tape. That works for me, brother. Except who else would he make a sex tape with? Because I don't believe that Hogan would want to go and have that twice. I think that would be like too much. Now, already we worked together, but at the, at the very least, not immediately afterwards. Have some build up to another sex tape with Bubba the Love Sponge's wife. Maybe he would go in somewhere else with someone else. And I would say maybe uh, the wife of Howard Stern. I mean, with what's become of Stern these days, I'm pretty sure that old Beth O uh, would like to go and be around a guy like that who... Yeah, yeah, Hogan may be 70, but you know, he he'll he'll still try and go. He'll still try and go, at least in the bedroom, if not the ring. Just right there, just like that. And other progress to show is on my very own comic. Well, this is actually my second very own comic. Yes, yes, yes. Last year I finally finished my first ever comic book, Pain Machines. When that, that is a psychological horror story, that is something I was proud to have completed because that one was very much a dark and twisted kind of story that felt like it was stuck in my head and I needed to rip out with some pain. Now, have you ever had a really, really painful number two? Ever taken an extremely painful shit? Oh, yeah. Something like that. The extremely painful shit. That, that's what uh, Pain Machines was to finish it. And now with Tanya, Lady of the Blade, it's been a matter of that being a sword and sorcery story where I'm steadily, steadily, steadily moving at a pace and getting more done. I've still kept up with my three pages a day pace of now the lettering stage, a 48-page comic that I'm doing all the artwork and the writing myself. Right there, you see it. This was the first page we lettered today. Then that is a uh, page number 23, then page number 24. And hello to Vanessa V coming in as promised right there. Hello to Vanessa V. And Vanessa, do not worry about all these new people. These all these new people, they're all fine folks that come from the world of the GCA. We've got also the Geeks and Gamers and of uh, earlier today from Friday Night Tights. So they're all good new people here. Everybody from Multi Maldi right there, good old Mr. Right there, Multi Maldi, two Nerd Slap and the GCA, and also Alec Baldwin's finger. All of them good friends. Yes, and of course, well, interesting that we would have Alec Baldwin's finger in the channel when he is a gentleman who also happens to have the namesake that resembles uh, my grandfather. Yes, my my father's side of the family apparently is a a, a whole gaggle of celebrity lookalikes. From my both both my grandparents on his side, resembling Alec Baldwin and model Lauren Hutton, as well as uh, when they were young. yes. They like and on top of that, I showed not uh, not too many weeks ago. My father found on uh, online uh, his like high school yearbook photo. He's been able to find like digitally copies of his yearbooks and all that stuff, the newspaper articles that would feature him in local sports. And he showed this uh, high school yearbook picture of him where he had to go and borrow, I believe it was an uncle's sport coat because he was so physically built, he could not fit into like a regular teenager's like sport coat. I, I was wearing shorts, but the only shoes were in the chest. And, uh, and in that picture at the time, I even put it on my Discord, um, uh, what exactly uh, th about his as a teenager resembling Keanu Reeves? And I showed it to the people on my Discord server, and they actually agreed. It's still there in the general section saying, yeah, I see the resemblance. Yeah, you know, and also, apparently, he had a cousin who also was the spitting image of Keanu in the first Bill and Ted. My cousin Gary looked exactly his, right. Yes, his cousin Gary was, uh, when he first saw the original Bill and Ted back in the 80s, he was like, oh, my God, that's exactly his cousin Gary. Right, right down to even the same haircut and the same build. If you remember Keanu in the first uh, first Bill and Ted, so, so. He, he was your grandfather's sister's kid. And there is a page the the twenty fifth page. All pages have been drawn. The whole thing's written. It's just now a matter of lettering. Twenty five down, twenty three to go. So that means that yes, we are halfway through. Time to celebrate. We can celebrate with this uh, nice little fountain pen, or maybe with uh, this nice little fountain pen that's smaller but weighs more. And well, Vanessa V is very much aware of Alec Baldwin's finger, seeing that he is hilarious since he sees his comments on other chats. Well, that's great to know. And Multi says, just so you know, it's the same vowel sound, malt plus mauled. 
but you do you. Okay, the multi moldy. All right, uh, multi multi moldy. All right, that's right. I considering how I've grown up with anybody out there. Type out what you think how my last name is appropriately pronounced. My last name. You go and you make your guess because I perfectly am aware of it. I perfectly understand getting a name wrong. It's something I'm used to. I think that's why when it comes to people with like you no know, Hindu names and how many syllables are in the name and how like okay, how the fuck do you say that? To the like well, a, a, an obvious joke from the love guru of my guru had my guru. Yes, I had the guru guru uh, Tuckan Mapuda. And my guru, he had the guru, Guru Chedaframanda. And his guru, Chedaframanda, had a guru, Guru has a small vena. Has a small vena has two important stages to his teachings before and after he got syphilis. One is to, to know is important, to love is universal. And then after that, he said things like eat and ate cheating. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Corolla, which? Uh, nope, multi. That's I not. Just put it up there. Ah, so, yeah. ah, so, sensei, yes, yes, uh, well, sensei is Japanese, sifu is Chinese, remember that, so, well, it depends on what practice of martial arts you follow, if you're for the sensei or for the, if you're for the sensei or the sifu, that's up for you. Either way, I was not born on a fucking turnip truck, and I was not born at night. It's time to get the fucking nitty gritty over here. Some sick shit up here, alligator. And well, multi multi says he practices bullet theory. Well, I mean, all right. He needs a picture of a woman. Well, yeah, multi. That's actually something my my father's wondering about. That oh yes, uh, I first uncovered that and thought multi being a woman on account of the avatar. But no, that's just a uh, that's just a lady's photo he uses. And yes, multi is a, a gentleman out there. But you know, with people out there, you can say whatever handle you want or whatever avatar can be. You know, Vanessa, I think that's just a photo of herself. You know, Nick's got Zero Ranger 5 Red up there. And, uh, well, my father, he doesn't put up a photo there. Other people, it's it's all up to them. And Nick also brings up, yes, it's the the great uh, YouTube channel. They're one of those uh, bad, uh, bad movie review YouTube channels called Jason Brandt. His, his series of videos are called uh, So Bad It's Good. And it's he the opening to every time they reviewed the majority of Steven Seagal's filmography to the point where now they're starting to dip into his like late 90s stuff. Like they reviewed the Under Siege sequel. Uh, the last couple movies he did with Warner Brothers, like Exit Wounds was his big comeback in the early 2000s, along with the majority of his straight to video stuff. So and now it's gotten to the point where once they went into the first review of one of his 90s movies, the one he directed on Deadly Ground, he became a legit A-lister with Under Siege. And he now said, OK, I want to go and direct my next movie that I'm starring in. And for there, the Jason Brandt people introduced a little intro video making fun of him. Yes. Uh, I've already killed you, but I have this now. Sifu Sagao. I was not born on a fucking turnip truck. And I was not born at night. The man, the man walks with an air of confidence rarely seen in this day and age. Sifu Sagao, Sifu Steven Sagao. Uh, it's it's time to get to the motherfucking nitty gritty right here. And let's not forget also his film. I believe it's called uh, The Perfect Weapon that he stars in, which features uh, the pride of Royal Oak, Michigan. WWE Hall of Famer, a guest at Astronomicon coming up in Livonia, Michigan at the Burton Manor, April 12th to the 14th, Rob Van Dam. Yes, his co-star, and I believe it's the perfect weapon, or no, Sniper Special Ops, that's the one, yeah. Because I remember John Oliver made a joke about jo about Seagal where he said he did like five different movies in one year, and the perfect weapon was one of them. But then, no, Sniper Special Ops is the one with Jean-Claude Van Damme. And that one, you actually see him walk for a bit, and he is waddling like hell. And on top of that, he's got all these fatigues on him, all this like Kevlar and all these pouches. So he looks fat as hell. Hello to Yo Pops215. Nice to see you back here, back here, back here. It feels like forever since we've seen him. As well as Fire Goddess in the chat right there, right there, right there, right there, right there. Let go, 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 go right there. Oh, yes. And well, Vanessa, definitely, definitely. Uh, my fa my uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that my father has uh, stolen Vanessa's heart right now. And she did have her birthday recently. And Vanessa was promised for my father a little something, a little something private and special. 
a little bit of a maybe. I don't know. But while we're also there, when it comes to Fire Goddess, I would like to thank Fire Goddess for her recent appearance on a stream where she did give us all a good reminder about how women can be such teases and such a mental hurricane to deal with relationships-wise. That's why she switched over to men. I'm not making a reference to Family Guy. No, ask her about that. If she wants to, that's really her thing. As a, if you remember that, the, with a Lois on Family Guy, oh, your father's right. Women can be such teases. That's why I went back to men. Go on. And yes, Fire Goddess is perfectly fine with that. But it, it, that, that, I do not lie to you out there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I give you the raw feed. If anything, maybe uh, that would be so. Maybe that could be something I could give as a title to like a different kind of video I could do, or maybe something else or some other kind of stream would just be the raw feed. If anything, th that's why I prioritize doing my videos where it's just me going into the camera. I don't try to jump cut. I don't try to edit. I give it to you straight. I give it to you raw. Hence, uh, the, my, my, my favorite or my second favorite Dennis Miller stand-up special, The Raw Feed. That's, I think, at the tail end of his HBO talk show we had. Because, yeah, there was the, the one he did when he was still clean-shaven and on Saturday Night Live called Black and White. And, uh, you ever gone to the bathroom of a porno theater? It's like, the, it's like a soccer match. No one wants to touch anything with their hands. If everyone's too scared of getting that Andromeda strain on their willy. The same special he makes the line about how uh, I, uh, okay, uh, I got more votes in the 84 election than Walter Mondale, and I didn't even vote. Mm -hmm. It's one of the biggest election, one of the biggest landslides in presidential history, the 84 election. If, you, if you're alive, if you remember the 80s, you probably remember that or maybe vaguely remember that. And also Walter Mondale seriously using the Wendy's catchphrase that was all over the place at the time, where's the beef, as part of his campaign. Yeah, if you remember that commercial that got so popular that the lady who yelled out, where's the beef, wound up appearing on, I believe, the Today Show, being interviewed by Mr. Brian Gumbel himself. I think Brian Gumbel's on the Today Show at the time. And also she wound up appearing in movies, like if you remember The Stuff, that sort of creature features media satire hybrid where it's all about this new sugary, like sweet product that's possessing people and even do a series of mock commercials for it where they have that same lady go, where's the staff? And uh, Vanessa V with a $5 super chat says, welcome back fire goddess and welcome all new chatters to Luke's. It's great to meet you guys. You will have fun and hear Luke's voice impressions. Oh, come on, plays there children. Okay, children, let's take our seats. You gotta ask Mr. Hat, Kyle. I don't wanna ask Mr. Hat. Mr. Hat, can I please go to the bathroom? Wrong, Kyle. You go to hell, Kyle. You go to hell and you die. I swear, Kyle, I will kill you with my bare hands when given the chance. And then we go into the Country Kitchen Buffet and we tape explosives to Kyle's chest. We all say our goodbyes to Kyle and put him inside the Country mm -hmm. Kitchen Buffet, blowing at the smithereens. Or we could just, you know, uh, put them inside. We could just lock the Country Kitchen Buffet from the inside so no one else can get in. Ooh, Jesus Christ. Mr. Garrison, I believe it's time for the gerbil. Oh, yeah, take it, Mr. Slave. I'm shoving that gerbil straight up your ass. Oh, God damn it. A tolerance just means that you're putting up with something. If you like it and celebrate it, that doesn't mean you're tolerant. That means that you should call it the Museum of Acceptance. Now, can I please get fired so I can sue your asses and get my $10 million? No. You were the, you were the douchebag. I was the asshole. That's right. I'm sailing away. Free to face the life that's ahead of me. I've got to be free. Free to face the life that's ahead of me. For that pot of gold, I'll try. Oh, Lord, I'll try to carry on. You like Mr. Slave? Okay, Paris Hilton, I challenge you to a whore off. If you don't teach children that women like Paris Hilton should be despised, they're going to learn it from everybody and wind up emulating them. And fuck you, baby. And fuck you, Wendy. And fuck you, Hattie. Oh, please, mister. Let me down. Put the lotion in the fucking basket. Ain't, ain't. That's a good precious. We're playing lambs. Ma'am, step out of the cab, please. 
I I am a cop, and you will respect my authority. I can see it in the future, too, except better than Carol. God damn it, Cartman, you can't keep making up powers. I am Boorag. Boorag has lots and lots of powers. Well, my, my mom took me to go see Mel Gibson's movie, The Passion, and he says that you are snakes and you are liars. And if the road warrior says it, it must be true. Come on, Cal. Prove Mel Gibson wrong. No, get your money back, Cal. After the same there, Cal. I swear, Cal, you will suck my balls. Oh, what are you doing, Cal? Oh, you dirty, you dirty girl. That's right. So come on down to South Park and meet some friends of mine. I also happen to like the stylings of Homer Simpson. I am Homer J. Simpson. The J stands for J. Do. Do. Are you talking to who? Why you let us? I'll teach you to laugh at what's funny. I, 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 caramba. Hey, hey, don't have a cow, man. One, one more of Mr. Slave. Is that what you're saying there, Vanessa? You just enjoy Mr. Slave so much. Ooh, yes. Ooh, yes. That's fun. Well, I have a poll up right now. What's Hulk Hogan's best movie? And so far, 91% of the vote is voting for Mr. Nanny. And only one other vote is not for Mr. Nanny. It's Assault on Devil's Island, which was a film he did with now the recently deceased Carl Weathers and also was made as part of him being with WCW. Because uh, if, I, I remember the first Hulk Hogan movie I ever saw was The Secret Agent Club, which I remember being something that was on TNT as one of those straight-to-video or made-for-TV made movies he did under Turner, which actually Eric Bischoff executive produced. You see on Assault on Devil's Island and uh, The Secret Agent Club, as well as, uh, although Three Ninjas High Noon and Mega Mountain, that one I think was Hulk, oh yeah, Hogan as Dave Dragon. Go, Dave Dragon. Go, Dave Dragon and the Star Force 5. I had not seen that for years and finally got to watch it again, thanks to Tubi, because they had all those Three Ninjas movies up there, and, well... If only my brothers and I were more like the three ninjas. Instead, they were more like, you know, uh, well, one of them was an especially disgusting bastard. And also with the success of Godzilla vs. Kong, do not forget that what I've got right up here for all of you, my King Kong that I did last week, uh, I did, er yes, I, I jumped the gun a little and I misremembered when the right time for the release would be. There is... My color Kong and my pen and ink Kong, if you like them. And with that, I'll go and give you all the link to my art store again. Because if you like any one of these pieces you're seeing right here, just follow the link to my store. And a $30 donation will get you any one of them. Or a $50 donation will get you uh, any two. All I have to do is then just come back into the stream and say which one of them you want. So there is Kong with his new off-brand, like, the Wish version of the Infinity Gauntlet. With, with it being solid gold, don't doesn't it remind you of the Infinity Gauntlet? I can't be the only one that's thought of that. Yes. Kong bows to no one. But then again, neither does the King of the Monsters, so this uh, planet ain't big enough for the two of them, hence why Kong winds up going to the Hollow Earth. We need a little Hollow Earth right there. Uh, That is fun, fun, fun. And also that daddy daddy won't take the T-bird away on that one. I don't know why I've been referencing that. That's just something I was thinking about. It's just something that just randomly comes to mind when I think about the, the word fun lately. And of course, it also includes the Hulkster right here with his nipples covered. Because little Hulk, my all my little Hulkamaniacs, if I didn't cover Hulk Hogan's nipples, then he'd be having giant nipples like ones you'd see of slices of pepperoni on a pizza. You don't want to see Hulk Hogan having giant nipples on a pizza now, do you? Those giant pepperoni nipples, or what was that one on Family Guy, the Al Roker birthday cake with the Hershey Kiss nipples? That would not be fun to have or to see right there. As we now get into the talent portion of the show, for all my newbies out there, 
This is the talent portion, yes. That's a little something different. Another thing different from this channel to others. You don't just get me. You also get my artistic abilities. Hmm. And also, I uh, did not get delayed last night, Robin. Um, that was uh, a little frustrating right now, yes. Uh, R Robin, uh, when's the last time you got laid? About a year. Oh, a year? My God, that's someone more pathetic than me. Oh, no. Here, here, say whatever you want now. You have carte blanche. And, uh, all right, now, I want you to go and do you, what, what kind of big stereo system? How are you listening to the show? You have one of those big stereo systems or a little pocket radio? All right, now, I want you to go and turn the treble all the way down and the bass all the way up. All right, the treble's down and the bass is up. All right, now, I want you to go and where the speaker is, straddle it and put your woofer over the speaker. All right. All right, now, now we're, we're going to go have sex. Ooh, it kind of tingles. You see, Robin? It tingles. Ooh, oh, she's full of it. Oh, 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 hello! Oh, this is the best sex I ever had. Oh yeah, a woman had an orgasm on the air. Are you insane, Howard? Now see what in the ratings. He's up. He's up by two points. Now see this guy. Uh, uh, there's a guy out of Hartford. I know he does comedy. He does bits. He does announces. No, I swear, if you bring this guy over, he, your, your ratings will go up another point. This guy is electric. This guy is total personality. Here at the Ben Stern Daycare Center, you will under you will be children will be confounded by questions that would send William F. Buckley to the rubber room. Now, uh, Howard, I want you to ask in no uncertain terms whether or not you think any country should be allowed to join the United Nations. Yeah, I think I should be allowed to join the United Nations and all the, all the world there and all the peace with throughout through all the different countries, except for all the dirty Japanese. <laughs> I told you not to be stupid, you moron. Howard, what 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 are you retarded? Yes. Now, uh, I want you to go, Beverly, and ask this question of whether or not you think that they should listen to uh, President Kennedy in electing more Democrats into the Senate. Yeah, and because I'm a Democrat, and I think they should have that. Eh? If you want your son to grow up like who dresses like a hell's angel, yet is too scared to drive a moped, send them to the Ben Stern School uh, daycare center. Hello to Critters Outlet. Nice to see you there. Oh, oh, and yes, 66 a W N B C. And now, Stewie, that's me. Oh, yes, I now have a new boss here at WNBC, and his name is Pig Vomit, because he looks like a pig and it makes him want to vomit, okay? Pig Vomit. And he's saying, I'm not reading the call letters correctly. It's still must be WNBC, a WNBC. And now I'm going to properly train my voice to say WNBC properly. I have a cup here of Blackswell's semen, and I'm going to use it to properly gargle WNBC. I think he swallowed. I swallowed, oh my god! <clears throat> oh, WNBC! And yes, too, a little nerd slap. Uh, it's so uh, nice to see you around. If you're dying over here, nerd slap, then just wait until you hear Mr. Covington. Oh, yes. Hello, I'm Mr. Covington. I've been an actor, a dancer, a singer, a model, a veteran, a trucker, a professional wrestler, as well as a Broadway choreographer. I've been all those things plus more, and I have many, many thoughts on life for all of you to see. I have thoughts on dinosaurs and thoughts on Anita Sarkeesian and thoughts on black girl gamers and thoughts on feminist frequency and even a few thoughts on maybe a little something like Tomb Raider. If you enjoy all those beautiful themes and dulcet tones, don't worry, I will all have them all available for you. But remember, if you love the sounds you're getting from Mr. Covington, you only get to hear Mr. Covington as a members-only series of videos. 
Yes. You have to become a channel member in order to enjoy every Tuesday, Mr. Covington's Corner. And y y you know, uh, I got a fever. And the only prescription is more cowbell. Uh, I got to have more cowbell. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, honestly, I'm going to say when it comes to the new updates on uh, Black Girl Gamers and the case they're now, the, the lawsuit they're throwing out at people there like that, uh, and the Trent that's dealing with it and handling it, I'll just say this. I didn't know anything. I didn't know where Gothics came before she started getting recommended in my YouTube feed. But now knowing that she was once a part of Black Girl Gamers and now is taking a big face turn going up against them. Well, I didn't know this, but now, yeah. My, my only thing is, I can't believe anybody that ever with any level of sanity actually ever worked for them. Although I will say, yeah, uh, you know, th th then again, remember that there is room for redemption. You know, remember today is Good Friday, and well, now that I know this about Gothics, now we know. Okay, well, hey, she's now she's she, she she she's moved up in the world. There's always room for that redemption arc there, and she made a redemption from where her channel is now and what she's done compared to having formerly worked for, as a part of Black Girl Gamers. Well, um, Vanessa wants more cowbell, and apparently, according to my father, my Uncle Bill needs more cowballs, because yes, one time when my father was visiting his uh, uh, my uncle's house there with my aunt and all that, they were there watching, it was a football game, where, uh, Michigan versus Ohio State, 1995, and my sister went up into Uncle Bill's bedroom and came down with a magazine showing things that only Vosh and Shank Uyghur would go and say uh, are healthy to do. She came down with as many magazines of man-animal love as she could carry. Things that if... I want to pause because Shank probably just fainted and Vosh has never had a larger erection in his entire life than hearing my uncle having this giant mountain of magazines of man on animal love. And well, then again, I can understand it because my aunt Donna is like Jabba the Hutt as a human female picture, a human female as Jabba the Hutt. Like if, if, if I had any pictures of her to show, you would understand why you would immediately start to imagine Jabba's laugh, the Kutala Kila Kola Kapadasila. And what do I have? I have two Aunt Donnas. That, that there was that one alternative. They're like some like alternative rock band I remember seeing called the Donnas. Well, I've got the Fat Donnas. That the the singers that did the song "It's Raining Men." They were known as the Weather Girls when they did that song. But uh, afterward, but originally they were called Two Tons of Fun. Uh, one of them went on to sing "Everybody Dance Now," but they had like a model in the video, just like lip singing to her. Uh, yeah, Nick is definitely right about Vosh is a bigger perv than Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, I think maybe that's why Harvey was allowed to be busted because he's just a dude that wants to bang a bunch of hot over 18 women. You notice that none of these accusations against him or any of these people, none of them are ever with like, oh, it's like it's like what's going on with, uh, you know, a Mr. Uh, Peck that actually got convicted that James Marsden publicly defended. And now, well, Paramount is lucky that uh, James Marsden isn't being featured in any of the ads for the Knuckles uh, miniseries that's coming up in uh, late April. He's lucky there. That they're lucky there. So they don't have to go and oh, now deal with that crap as all of this is going up now. And yeah, yeah they're, they're, at least there's that. Maybe that's why. And, and with, with Vosh between the, you know, lolly, as he called it, that he got to flaunt on his stream. And then his response on his next stream was to talk about wanting to be a horse so that he can go and be that Seth Rogen monologue from the beginning of the Four Door Virgin. You know, the, the woman fucking a horse. It's like, you know, uh, I went over to this guy's house, uh, Vosh. He's like a YouTube guy. I went over to this house, and uh, he's in a big horse costume, and he starts acting out a woman fucking a horse. I mean, you hear, like, okay, Vosh is a horse, and now he's a, a woman fucking a horse. It's like, it's it's a woman fucking Vosh as a horse. I mean, it uh, Vosh was really giving it to her. I kind of felt bad for her. I kind of felt bad for Vosh. Like, this guy needs mental health care. This guy needs, like, the biggest mental health break of all time, man. Ho, <laughs> ho, yeah, whoa, I had a weekend. Uh, I'm going to stay the fuck as far away from that dude as possible. 
because I think I'm going to need to be in therapy after seeing that shit. And I starred in that crappy Green Hornet movie, man. Uh, the, the, the first of the many cardinal sins. Since today is Good Friday, yeah, let's go and we can categorize all the cardinal sins uh, or uh, immortal sins that Seth Rogen has made. The first one being butchering the classic pulp radio hero known as the Green Hornet, which still has some no variety of vitality on um, thanks to Bruce Lee and Van Ones back in the 60s with Bruce Lee's cult status keeping that show in the limelight and all that. Yes. And on top of that, we got, what was it, that uh, that K-pop guy? Uh, he got some, like, K-pop singer to be Kato. If you thought, you know, having the Green Hornet be Seth Rogen was bad, then the, what really made it memorable beyond, like, the 30s, uh, the 1930s radio uh, drama back in the, from way back in, like, my grandfather's day, it was Bruce Lee retroactively keeping the network alive, keeping it alive, keeping the memory alive. Don't let that fire go out. Never let that fire go out, yes. Don't do that, you jackass! And no, I'm not a chubby chaser, but uh, Daily Dysfunction, Vanessa wants to say that we all love you here. Uh, I'm not a chubby chaser. I may enjoy Chubby Checkers one hit, do the twist, but that's it. I do the twist. That's it. Uh, mama, mama, I want me with Chubby Checker. It's a Chubby Checker with cheese. Oh, because it's show day, please. Yo, man, it tastes so good. Rock was talking Chinese. Take my king out of the double. Hey, that good pie. Oh, hey, 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 it's tough to be the rock. No, no, shut your mouth now. Shut your mouth. It is tough to be the rock because he is the most electrified man in all the showbiz. And when the rock gets enough of the fame and all the bright lights, he needs to sink his teeth into that unadulterated delight. And Vanessa B with a $2 super chat says, sending hugs and love to daily. Yes, yes, yes. We love it. Loud noises. I don't know what we are yelling about. It's anchor man, not anchor lady. Loud noises. Yes, I stabbed a man in the heart. I saw it. Brent killed a guy. Uh, Brent, you're probably going to want to find some family nearby and lay low for a while because you are probably wanted for murder. Oh, yeah. Right there, uh, Michigan just tied it up. They're in the uh, men's hockey tournament right now. They're going up against Notre Dame. It's 2-2. Two to two. Oh, it's North Dakota. I thought it was. It's ND. No, it's North Dakota. Well, yeah. Well, but yeah, the, the either way, still yeah, crush the North Dakota assholes and let's keep let, let, let's keep them known for being the other Dakota. Well, oh, my father says he's nutty for nipples, so should I? Yes or no? Should I add nipples onto this piece right here? <laughs> should I add the nipples on Hogan? <laughs> should I? Or would you all like to hear more? from Fire Goddess uh, talking about how she is, uh, you know, how she knows firsthand about women can be so, you know, much such head cases to deal with in relationships that you do wind up having to go to a man. And Nick brings up sex power, panther power activated. Oh, yes. 100% uh, of the time, it works. 60% of the time, it works 100% of the time. Good old Mr. Our Friend Paul Rudd as seen there in our little fun time of Anchorman. Hogan wishes he had abs like that. Well, I do remember back in the day, he was a big dude, but wasn't really, like, shredded. He wasn't. That's, that's the funny thing of, if you remember after the whole FBI investigation on roids in the WWF, you saw him then when he came back to WrestleMania 9, and then in his like early couple years with WCW, he actually looked in better shape there. Like physically, he looked more shredded than he did in his 80s heyday. He he looked he he looked and like 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 he had more muscle tone. It's like looking at Arnold in uh, Conan the Barbarian. Look at him there, and yeah, he's still big, but he's like bulkier. But there isn't as much muscle definition as he had back in his Mr. Olympia days. And then Conan the Destroyer. He's he's much more toned. If you notice that, that's that. Yeah, go and watch Conan the Destroyer, however you can. Uh, I mean, I've got a DVR thanks to um, I believe in the Sundance channel, 
And yeah, he is all, he's much more built there. I don't get it, but hey, you know, it's, he still fought for Kram and he turned down the chance to be a king, for he will be a king by his own hand and only having a heart in his, in his heart for the love of Valeria. Oh, of course, you remember uh, uh, on his, one of his early film roles in Hercules in New York, where he's uh, 19. Uh, it was sometime, yeah, Arnold Strong, he was credited because of his last name. If you remember, I watched it, that A uh, that uh, and e movie about, it's, it's called See Arnold Run. It's actually got two stories. There's one where the great German actor Jürgen Prochnow from stuff like Das Boot stars as Arnold running for governor. And the second story is flashing back to him tr uh, trying to get into acting, trying to transition into acting after so many years in the world of bodybuilding and already being pretty successful financially on account of his real estate investments that he already became a millionaire in his 20s. Yes, uh, I, I remember that, that and uh, the, 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 there he is, there's Arnold and... Uh, and there's multiple times where there's him going on like a talk show in his early bodybuilding days. There's, I think, like Diane Sawyer's interviewing him. And it's like, hey, here, Arnold Schwarz, she's like stuck on his last name. It's like, oh, for you, it's just Arnold. Well, the, yeah, I, I can relate to that. There was a movie about the bodybuilding, ty the, the bodybuilding magazine tycoon, uh, Joe Weider, that really discovered Arnold and made him a star in the bodybuilding world called um, Bigger. And a part of the story is about uh, Weeder discovering Schwarzenegger, and he finds him. Uh, it's like one of his like cronies, or whatever, working in the magazine for him. Says, "Oh yeah, there's this guy of Austria, like Arnold. I, I couldn't tell you his last name, but he shows him all these photos." And Weeder's like amazed, and he's looking at him. He's like, "I." And one thing they show Weeder doing throughout the movie is doing like figure drawing of like the real Michelangelo, like idealized physiques. And he's looking at him like, "I've been." And when he goes over to uh, Austria to discover him and like talk to him, he's like, I've been drawing you for decades because they show all throughout the years of, of uh, Joe Weider doing all these figure drawing, like sketches of ideal human muscle and all that. And he shows, uh, he sees, uh, he yeah, all these things, all these sketches he's done. And Arnold just happened to look exactly like this perfect figure he's been drawing for years on end privately. So then he winds up personally coming, bringing him over from the land of uh, Strudel and uh, Adolf, you know, that, 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 well, oh, yeah, yeah, he would have already been in Germany at that time, but, but still, yeah, brought him over from Germany out to America, to the, he always wanted to come to America, he thought that the land, it would be the land he would want to see, and Nick says he has that movie Bigger on Blu-ray about the Weeders, uh, yeah, I've seen it a bunch of times. Uh, the actor who plays Joe Weider is the guy who stars on Superman and Lois. If you remember that, that that I think that's still on that Superman CW show that actually people like the ones I've the ones I've heard see it actually like it. So all right, that's uh, and also uh, the, and I can't tell you anything about the guy who plays Arnold, but a guy like Arnold is so distinctive that you can't really. You, you having somebody portray him in a movie is always going to come off like a goofy impersonation. It's like with Michael Jackson. That that's like the the kind of celebrity level that Arnold is on now. And he, uh, Mickey Hargitay, where's Hargitay? He was a Mr. Universe for real. That must have been that must have been some other movie I've never seen. It was a made for TV Arnold. Oh uh, yeah, another made for TV Arnold oh, movie. Not not a uh, C Arnold Run. That's the one I was talking about. That has acclaimed actor Jurgen Prock now playing him as Arnold running for governor, and then they get this bodybuilding guy who actually appeared in Terminator Salvation. Yeah, there's like the, the the model of Terminator before they get to the Arnold one. They show that's that same guy who plays Arnold in his bodybuilding years, trying to become an actor. And we see his struggles of people like your accent's so hard, people can't understand you. Your name is so unpronounceable, and it's they really build it up as like this against all odds, he became a star. And of course, there's a scene where he happens to be talking to this guy, where the actor happens to be the spitting image of James Cameron. And well, they, they do kind of fudge the timeline and pretty much ignore Conan already being there. And well, it, it, with all the talks, whatever, about his accent being so inscrutable and his uh, you know, name being so unpronounceable, well, take it upon Uber producer Edward R. Pressman, who got the rights to do Conan as a movie and seeing Arnold and Pupping Iron, he said, no, that is Conan. No one else could have done it. 
I remember in that same making of, D- of documentary DVD on the DVD for Conan, they show that I think Dino De Laurentiis, the producer, the other producer, had the idea of uh, Dustin Hoffman being considered for Conan, and like I think Pressman and director John Milius like just laughing in his face until they brought Arnold in, and they j- yeah no this is the guy, and apparently it was Pressman who. Uh, I think Arnold had never heard of Conan or whatever, so it took Pressman took it upon himself to take Conan, I mean Arnold, to a comic book store and show him Conan comics on the rack because what really made the Conan character viable to get a movie that then eventually got made and really was responsible for the 80s explosion of fantasy films was Marvel's Conan comic books that started in 1970 and then got so big there was the monthly comic through Marvel, the regular Marvel four-color comic and also in tandem with that, there was the Savage Sword of Conan Black and White magazine, which, you know, I think I think they actually both stuck around almost as long as uh, there was, uh, as Marvel had the license. There was the Marvel Conan, and then eventually the rights went up to Dark, went over to Dark Horse, and Dark Horse both reprinted all the Marvel stuff and also did their own great stuff, including a bunch of artists for Conan and writers for Conan. What did I tell the guy in Hollywood where he said I should change my last name to difficult? All right. Now, my father, he came out to California, except he's a PhD. He's a doctor. He wasn't planning to, you know, become an actor or anything. And there was an agent out there who told him he should change his last name. It's too hard for people. And all I told him was... No, wait, wait. Here, here, uh, yeah. Uh, an agent told my father he should change his last name. It's too hard to say, too hard to spell. No, he said if I wanted to be, like, you know, well-known, popular, get a TV show, he said I should change my last name. And I said, how about Schwarzenegger? And then he didn't answer me back. He gave up. Yes. So the point where now, every time I type out my last name, I get the red squiggle uh, in correction. While at the same time, if I wanted to go either to like a YouTube or whatever or Google and type in Arnold and I put just simply S, automatically they have the autofill for Schwarzenegger perfectly correctly spelled, always. Or just type in Arnold. First couple of A's. Like a maybe yeah, just Arnold itself, and now he's one of those names where yeah, it'll still autofill to oh, do you mean Schwarzenegger? Like I, I to the point where I remember Hey Arnold and Nickelodeon uh, that that show in its peak when it was still on the air with new episodes. I remember vividly there was a whole marathon of Hey Arnold, and that was the way the network was celebrating Arnold Schwarzenegger's birthday. It was like 1998, 99 or so, and it was like just just because they had a whole like marathon of Hey Arnold to celebrate his birthday. If anybody else remembers seeing that, just say so. Then again, why not? Even though this was at the time of post Batman and Robin Arnold, the steady decline of the, of the like box office viability of his films from you know after but that after Batman and Robin, then you got the uh, end of days and then the sixth day and uh, collateral damage. I actually did like End of Days. That's one where I disagree with the nostalgia critic. I agree with the nostalgia critic on how John Cena now is starting to look like a melting earnest, but I disagree about End of Days being a, b- a bad one. Uh, that that's up to you. Uh, I'm all for what do you what what do you have to say? That's why I said about Ellis Island being er- my channel bank Ellis Island. I mean that. What what whatever your opinion is, just go ahead and shout it out. Go ahead, right up there, right here, right now. Just say so. Right there to uh, Vanessa and everyone else. And, and uh, I also remember The Sixth Day was a film that it was so badly received, it wound up winning uh, Razzies, I remember. And I remember vividly uh, the Razzies uh, uh, that year. And in that year, this Razzie winning movie had a tie in with the NFL. No, not the NFL, the XFL. So if you remember the XFL uh, being so bad, or whatever, being such a nightmare disaster. Just remember, uh, yeah, they had an XFL tie-in. That's uh, n- n- not not a great plan. That's so ripped. He got fucking That's a, n- not not a great plan. Just 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 not a great plan. Uh, that is a and. Uh, that is a thing that you should all know about with the world of Arnold. But remember, with Arnold, it's not like if, say, he grows out of something, he won't pivot. Like nowadays, yes, I mean, he'll still do stuff, but it'll be like things that'll only get like a theatrical release over in foreign countries where he's still very, very viable. But he'll still do other things like, the, of course, the great State Farm ad he did with the, you know, something that hasn't really, something he hasn't really like leaned in for a long time. 
is of mocking his accent. But yes, the, the like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Uh, it's it's neighbor, 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 neighbor. And uh, Nick says, I think that actor was also the young Arnold in Genesis. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure that one, that was all Arnold. Yeah, there, there's they do the CGI thing where they have a CGI copy of Arnold from the first movie fighting the present day Arnold. Yeah, that that, that that's what they did. They took footage from the first movie, the, the whole Griffith Observatory scene where you first see him bare ass naked. And then they have uh, the they splice in the, the current day. Well, 2015 Arnold. The, the Arnold, I remember that came out. And then that summer, I was over in LA for a couple of weeks and I saw Arnold in person with his daughter that's now married to Chris Pratt at the, uh, at the famous Gold's Gym in Venice Beach. If you remember that there, who said I'm fair to be or not to be, not to be? You gotta get that. But remember, Hogan did still have some of his hair. Yes, he was, you know, already pretty shiny up on top, but it doesn't mean he still didn't have that hair flowing all in the back. He still has that little strings. You won't be needing, yes, he won't be needing any clothes. Unfortunately, the movie's PG-13, so any Game of Thrones fans expecting to get a, a new nude scene out of Amelia Clark, you were uh, stuck. Sorry about that, but yep. no, no, no Amelia Clark nudity. That, that was made when she was still being stuck up about her nude scenes, about not wanting to do any new nude scenes. If only they had waited or something a little bit until afterwards, or then you get to like season six, I think, of Game of Thrones is when she finally went back to, okay, I'll do nudity. And there she is in the burning building, fully nude. And well, we were all loving it. And also that like drowsy British period drama she was in that got some attention on account of her doing nudity and also her, you know, uh, fiddling herself in a scene. Yes. We don't just get a nude scene. We also get a little masturbatory fantasy out of her. So... All of those who you know wanted some of that, who remember the Game of Thrones parody on South Park, where they had the whole thing with uh, uh, the, of uh, uh, Kenny as the princess, where he's trying to be Daenerys and all that. What betrayed my kind? And now a decision for it has a dual shock controller. A uh, princess, uh, Kenny. A princess. I am a little Oh, yeah, Nick, I forgot about that. Uh, Hulk Hogan's finest performance, Gremlins 2, The New Batch. The, the great fourth wall breaking moment of the movie being yanked off its sprockets, uh, and the theater owner winds up having to go to the theater. Oh, sir, could you help us out with this problem? He's like, sure. No. The, the, the real interesting bit for me was getting to see Hulk Hogan like out of character for like a few seconds, where he's not completely hulking up and going crazy with his promos. He's just in the theater, and he's like, oh, yeah, sure. All right up there, you think the Grimsters can take on the Hulkster? What they want here is cold soda, hot popcorn, and for the movie to not be interrupted. So you think they're everybody ill and bring on the rest of Grimsters too? Sorry, folks, it won't happen again. Uh, when Red Letter Media did their review of Gremlins 2, people, they, both Mike and Jay were wondering, uh, what, what's, what even would you call that? I would call it Hulk Hogan's finest performance. Yes. I would maybe uh, Rocky Three depends. If you prefer Hulk Hogan and Rocky Three over Gremlins Two, that should just say so. Once again, remember this is not a situation where uh, we all want to hear what it is you got to say. Just bring it up, bring it up, bring it up, baby. And yes, that was absolutely hilarious. And I like to thank Pluto TV for making that available to watch. And I I caught uh, Gremlins Two not too long ago, so that's pretty fresh in my mind. Unlike The Princess Bride, which I did see repeatedly, but it has been a very long time, so I I can't... It, 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 I'm just going off memory. It's like Family Matters, where because of the American Society of Magical Negroes, that got me thinking about like Urkel for some reason, and I was able to go and just simply put on Family Matters, thanks to my DVR. And I happened to just randomly pick some episodes and put on two episodes I remember vividly from watching on TBS all the time in reruns. One where it's the story within the story where it's Urkel imagining himself as like a private eye. And the other one was the American Gladiators crossover where, yeah, there's uh, if you remember that show, American Gladiators, I remember that. And yeah, it's it's uh, it's uh, Carl Winslow and Steve Urkel on American Gladiators. 
right there with uh, Mr. Mike Adamley and Larry Zonka. Which, of course, they did a reboot of it in the mid-2000s with Layla Ali co-hosting with Hulk Hogan. And a young Gina Carano as one of the gladiators. She was called Crush. Lights up, Meatball! For all my love slaves out there, Thunder Lips is here in the flesh, baby. Observe this. The ultimate male versus the ultimate meatball. All fake, huh? All fake. Ah. Uh, boom. Adrian, catch me. Why are you going so crazy out there? That's the name of the game. Hey, can we take that photo up? Yeah, sure. There he is. Hulkamania would not have been the same without Rocky III. Yeah, that is that is true. Because I even watched that reality show he had. Does anybody else? Did anybody else ever watch Hogan Knows Best? Because I remember watching the first season of that, and then I remember uh, one of the times I visited Miami. My I was down there with my father. It was spring, spring break, if I remember right, and uh, yeah, there, there's like in right there in the middle of Miami Beach. There's a crunch gym, and there was Hogan. Uh, there he was training. And my father checked to go and had to sign a waiver that they could show his likeness. Yeah, that was one of those things where because there they were at their cameras and it was going to be broadcast, uh, that, that was something where we you had to go and do that. Because if you notice, that was like something with, if you remember the Tom Green show, they would do that and there would be situations where you would see like a guy on the stream uh, I mean, on the on the video, and their face is all blacked out, or it's like either blurred or black boxed or black barred. Yeah, because they didn't sign the release, or either it was some situation where they like the crew got so scared, or they had to like rush away, so they didn't sign the release. They didn't even like bother giving them that release. But you know, with with a Hulk Hogan show, as you know, crazy or violent or drunk as Brian Knobs could get, you no, know, the the that's when I first ever saw Brian Knobs was uh the nasty Brian Knobs of the Nasty Boys. He's there as like Hogan's dumb friend all the time, causing havoc for everybody. The nasty. They're nasty boys, indeed. Nasty, real nasty boys. Mm. We gotta sit in Hollywood. Oh, yes. Hollywood. Oh, bo, bo, bo. And uh, we've got also Don Don Power Ranger in the chat. So hello to him out there. And actually, Nick used to watch Hogan Knows Best. Yeah, I I think I may have watched it the whole time it was on. It's a, I, I wasn't watching wrestling at the time, but I was watching his show. And then later on, retroactively watching the SummerSlam uh, feud with him and Shawn Michaels and all that. I remember watching that and uh, Michaels referencing Hogan Knows Best. As long as my name's Hulk Hogan. Yeah. And Hogan, uh, he's in, he's like, now he moves the family from like Clearwater up to Miami and they're trying to learn Spanish, I remember. And you get to see Hogan in like a big, like Panama style hat with a big cigar. And well, uh, I remember after that also Hogan had like a reality, sh another reality show was like a competition show of like a, New, like, like a, well, one of those things where they get, like, C-less celebrities to do some kind of, like, competition. And, but they did have Dennis Rodman, and Dennis Rodman's always entertaining. Especially when he was, had that relationship with uh, Hogan back in the 90s, where you'd see him there uh, in WCW events. He'd be there with, uh, he'd be there with his big cigar and all that, and I think, remember, famously, Rodman missed, like, a practice for the NBA playoffs to go... Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah, that's right. Call it too. You got that now? You got that right, Cal? That's it. Down, 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 down. Now. Bring on the Spartans. Uh, me amo is Brian. You don't have to explain. You don't have to finish it with that. Just simply say, if you want to ask my, tell me your name, just say, me amo Brian. Okay, you can speak English? No, just that sentence and this explain this. Are you sure about that? Okay. Uh, vamos a ir a donde el hombre, y en aquel no conozco que lo, 
Dos o besos de esos de bueno. Coro de teto, de teto, de teto, de teto, de teto, de teto, Sounds okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, the Lou Gossett Jr. Also, the passing of I believe the I I don't I think he was the first black actor to win an Oscar. I I as I saw that actually on Geeks and Gamers this morning, and that was somebody just randomly in the chat saying R.I.P. Lou Gossett Jr. at eighty seven, and then I saw on TMZ first black uh, Academy Award winning actor Lou Gossett Jr. at eighty seven. And then uh, after that, he did stuff like, uh, if you remember, Jaws 3D, or uh, the another thing that people didn't really bring up much, except actually, wait, there was like one person did a super chat on Geeks and Gamers this morning that talked about the uh, the movie, uh, the Punisher, yeah, the Punisher movie. What, what do you call 400 homicides in a year? A work in progress. Uh, I never have seen Roots, but my father says that he was in Roots. Because I, I know like major actors that were in there, like name a major black actor of like my father's age or so, and they were in there. Even like Todd Bridges, I think even before Different Strokes, he was one of Kunta Kinte's kids. Uh, I remember, uh, yeah, of course, LeVar Burton. And then older, like mature uh, Kunta Kinte is uh, John Amos from Good Times. And of course, coming to America, he ran the McDowells. And uh, O.J. Simpson even had a part. That's probably one where retroactively we're like, yeah, you know, uh, Slave Masters, you can hit him with the whip all you want. Make him change his name. That, that's one where, yeah, it, it's okay for slave owners to, you know, be, smack him around. Nick says, I like Jaws 3 a lot. I would say out of the Jaws sequels, I actually do like Jaws 3. Yeah, I, I find it goofy, but that's, uh, that's like the goofy fun. It's a goofy fun kind of sequel. It's just when you go from the combination of huge blockbuster success and also like major artistic like peak creative peak with a great filmmaker like Spielberg to then something there that's more like a ridiculous B movie when the whole idea of Jaws was to take like a B movie premise and make it into this big mainstream thing it was the movie that really invented the whole summer blockbuster really because before then the summer was not really known as like the major time for movies but then they put that there, and it went up, you know, devouring all box office records, pun intended, in a way that no one else would have ever expected, and that then really changed the, you know, what times of the year we really go out to the film, out to the uh, cinema. And it's all still better than I hope that one lady that they showed on Friday Night Tights has not seen Jaws because she would look at the shark and find it sexy. That, that, that there was this one girl on there's this one crazy super woke type of lady that was on that they talked about on Friday Night Tights this afternoon and in her Twitter bio she it's not gender pronouns or anything it's that she refers to herself as a monster fucker yes a self-professed monster fucker well, and then actually somebody saw her feed and then they made a meme of it's a picture of John it's a frame of John Goodman's character from Monsters Inc and he's got this big like shocked look on his face and then they photoshop this Twitter lady behind her of course she's got of course she's got bright blue hair why was I a monster fucker I fucked your mother she's a fucking psycho monster uh, I'm guessing then my father's also a monster fucker but then again that's my my evil monster mother is what he's saying Favorite movie is a sex monster. Uh, no, it isn't. That's one you like because the director being from around here. I prefer his work. The rich, the rich, rich from Birmingham. I prefer his work directing Blank Man and also directing the uh, documentary about Mitzi Shore. You know, he wrote them. He yes. Wrote sex monster and director. Let's get this. Get this out of the way. I'm trying to find all the little pencil marks. And Jaws 2 is pretty good, says Nick, but he likes 3 better. Yeah, it's good. It's just, you know, good, not great, and it's still trying to be more like the first one. But at the same time, it's still trying to give you, like, oh, right, you know, people like the sharks, so we got to give you more. we gotta, we got to have more sharks. More of the sharks, we got to have more shark attacks and all that. Uh, I remember seeing... Well, I remember thinking like Jaws was a movie I liked, and what really scared me was the poster. 
that that was the, the Jaws poster was one of those things where if I saw it, I would like run away in fear or cover my eyes for years on end. I cannot look at the Jaws poster at all. That was that was like a massive personal fear that took years to get away or get over and get away from. Only now in uh, only like I would say like middle school or something I was able to get past that. And then I saw in one video store, I believe it was a Hollywood video, I saw the poster for Jaws 2. And that's a poster where it's a woman like jet skiing and you see the shark popping up behind her. And that also is featured actually in the movie that there is a part where you see this like, you know, California girl and she's on the jet ski and then whoop, up comes a big, uh, comes the shark that like yanks her down in the water. And then later on, there's the Friday the 13th remake where there's the girls uh, jet skiing topless, if you remember that. And there's the big graphic mutilation that goes on there. All right, all right, all right, all right. Now, what have we got here, brother? What are you going to see, brother? And now, hey, everyone. The one who set the bar really high. The one, the only, the incredible Hulk. Hogan! Oh. One more match. One more match. Is there anything I learned in this business? It's never say never. Ugh. I'm not going to have a full-blown match, but I am going to make a small appearance. I'm going to go there, you know, just you know, uh, beat up on some guys, you know, get, get the crowd all crazy. Yeah, WrestleMania. Okay. Oh, I might tell you something, brother. Oh, that was a beautiful Hulk Hogan is living on borrowed. Hulk Hogan is living on borrowed time, brother. And every day that Hulk Hogan wakes up and isn't dead, brother. Oh, 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 it's a miracle, brother. Oh, brother, 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 brother. Da, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, God, crab, 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 crab. Ah. Oh. There. You see, Hogan, you got your reality show. Hogan knows best. But what you gonna do when reality kicks you right in the face? Pull. This little. This is, I think, the first time you'll ever see. Uh, we haven't seen Shawn Michaels in an NWO shirt since 2002. But let's uh, get rid of all of that now. This Shawn Michaels is from the Royal Rumble 95, and he already comes with his own hat and jacket. I should really put that hat and jacket back on him. And now put the stripping, stripped for your, you know, there's ribbed for your pleasure. This is stripped for your pleasure. That's right. Oh, 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 yeah, come on, come on. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, right there. What you gonna do? What you gonna do, brother? What you gonna do? Hulkamania's running wild on you. Hulkamania is running wild on you. Ah 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 ah. Yeah, this is a. We're going to hell for this one, aren't we? This is Good Friday, and this is how I'm celebrating Jesus being crucified. Taking a wrestler who, for years, would always wear a crucifix when going out to do promos or going out to the ring. And I just had him go and uh, 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 do do a little Oz, if you remember that prison show on Shawn Michaels right here. That's that 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 that's uh, that's good family fun, isn't it? And well, Nick, you were saying earlier about how Hogan never had those kind of abs. Well, let's go and do a comparison. Here's a Hulk Hogan's abs and what I just drew versus Hulk Hogan right here in this toy's abs. Neither one of them are good. Neither one of them are accurate. Neither one of them correct, baby. That's right. Yo, know, peel his muffin cap back blue. That's right. I says, say with your chest. That's fun, ain't that? All right, baby. You gonna get that good day. Oh, yeah, he good. Yeah, good is terrible. I believe the children are future. Eat them well and let them lead the way. Do you think that uh, Hulk Hogan led the children well in the, back in the 80s? I think he did. Although it may have been a little bit more, you know, private when he would go and be doing this to, you know, Shawn Michaels. Little silly. That's just a little silly time. A little bit of a Billy, silly Billy. Starting to sound like Dusty Rhodes there for a second. 
I just heard a car door close outside. Well, I do have my new neighbors, the new neighbors that gave me an uh, old-fashioned, like, push lawnmower. Yeah, the, he, he was, like, cleaning out a bunch of stuff from, like, his basement and things and, like, organizing his house and all that. Okay. Yeah. Amazon was supposed to deliver by 10. Yeah. My my father uh was supposed to get uh his applesauce. He ordered he, he has he he has applesauce ordered from Amazon and it hasn't showed up today. Well, it's actually from Whole Foods. It's a, Amazon. You, with, via Amazon you can order stuff from Whole Foods on like a regular like basis yeah, and he's got right. he's got an apple he's got an applesauce subscription from Amazon and they haven't delivered today. That is not good. I think the toothpaste came. Emergency. It all came from the subscription. And what do we got? Oh, wait. Oh, here's the belt. Do you want him to wear the belt? I think, yeah, let's go and have him wear the belt around the waist. Oh, Here we go. Oh, yeah. Now here we are, brother. Which, what we got to do here, brother? Oh, brother, brother, brother. Oh, yeah, that's too hard. Let's go and do it this way. And also today, I rewatched Tommy Boy. I had that DVR, and I watched. I rewatched that. Uh, I had it on during my dinner. Uh, yeah, like the last hour or so of a Friday Night Tights, I had it on. And uh, you remember there the whole part where the whole scam of uh, Bo Derek marrying into Chris Farley's family to get his fort to get the family's fortune, and Rob Lowe is actually her husband posing as her son. Thing is, though. You know, if, if you grew up and Bo Derek was your mom, you probably would be having some very confused feelings. You probably have, uh, you, you probably, I wouldn't say you would act on them, but definitely you'd be looking at your mom, Bo Derek, and think, my God, that's, uh, uh, okay. Now what are you doing? What, what's, what, what, what is that? I, I can't believe, uh, ch checking out her ass, or hoping maybe, you know, if you bring friends, if friends want to come over to your place to see her in a swimsuit out by the pool, that might be something you'd see. And now, brother, let's move on to what you all want to come back here for to see the Duke go live this way. Mm -hmm, brother. That's good. Hogan in this way with this. Finished up and ready to go. Of course, always signed. A real artist signs their work impeccably. Yes, attack, don't sit back. Remember that. In life, you have to attack, don't sit back. And what have we got? Well, now, actually, every movie now, we've got enough votes coming in now, all four. Yes, Mr. Nanny still has the number one spot. But now, Suburban Commando and Assault on Devil's Island are tied at 12%, and No Holds Barred are 6%. Get back in your goddamn net. And where are we going to compare this up, to? Let's go. Offside. Got the last. Yeah. Get him. Don't let him skate around the net. And I said, I'm on TV. Here we've got Hulk Hogan this way and Hulk Hogan that way. And with the, the link to my store back in the chat, just remember, if you like either one of these pieces, follow them into my store and follow the link to my art store in the chat there. And a $30 donation will get you either one of these two or a $50 donation will get you a both. And I will ship them out to you first thing tomorrow morning. It will be the subject of my next Luke Goals Postal video, my favorite kind of video to do. And yes, they are... They, I, I would say that they're like cheesing. Why? Because they're fun to do. And either one of them, you don't see Hulk Hogan's nipples. What are they doing? And that is always the best time to have. The best fun to have. It's just like how fun it was to see all these new people coming in here tonight. All of the, Let's hope that there's more of them in uh, the future. Because, well, you know, the, that song that says, uh, greatest love of all, I believe the children are our future. Well, this type of channel, I, uh, the children are, I would say, are not my future because my child, my channel is definitely not family friendly. And it also happened to be a song that my father was playing all the time during his uh, Death Valley run back in 82. Yes. He ran across Death Valley in August for Jerry's clear kids. Clear the puck. Clear the puck. Oh, clear it, clear it. They scored. They fucking scored. 
He's raising up his arms like they scored. Mm, that's so. do it. Yeah, they better be. But what is there to think about all those things, all those people there? Because the more the well, remember, the more the merrier, although still, yeah, the the children are the future of the world, but maybe not around here. I don't and also don't forget about that whole thing with YouTube kids where you have to have that little button to say, no, this is not made for children. Because if you haven't made for children, then, of course, remember there's that thing where those videos can't be monetized. Even, yeah, we got a little. There. Hear that. What are they going to call it? Offsides? Yeah. Just a little, a little dry right there. Um. I know it's a little. Seconds. There's only a few seconds left of the game, so we can have some fun. And we can also have Vegeta right there. 29 seconds. All of my friends, you are welcome. You shall come. You shall understand why I recommend Luke's channel, for he is Prince of the Saiyans. I thought of myself. As the prince of the Saiyans for the longest time. But no, I am nothing more. Nothing less. And nothing that ever will be. Wow. They're counting down. Yes. There we go. There we go. Oh, yeah. Win a chicken dinner. Yes. Bring on the Spartans. Bring on the Spartans someday, baby. Victory has been had. And I believe anybody who thought otherwise, you have all been had as well. Believing that the Prince of the Saiyans would endorse any channel that did not bring in beauty and glory and honor to the Saiyan race. You were truly, truly now have been humiliated in your disbelief. Your lack of belief in my strength was something that you all are now forever, ever, ever be punished and must do penance to have ever doubted that Luke the Duke did not understand where the true glory of battle lies. Glory, hallelujah, his truth is marching on. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, baby. Somebody stop me. Now, this is the story all about how my life got flipped turned upside down. I want you to take a minute just sitting right there. How I became the prince of a plant that's not there. <laughs> Smacking on some ass. Hey, girl, why don't you make me a dad? <laughs> and started making fun of how my dad was dead. I got in one little fight. I will not let a monkey fight with blonde hair. What are we doing? And it's tight. How could he be a super saiyan? No, 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 All of my battles with Kakarot. The game isn't over. But they didn't document any of the battles we had off problem? of Earth. What kind of problem is there? Now I have a question. Does an android experience fear? Ugh. 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 Oh. This guy got oh. majorly oh, that's it. That's why they all stopped. Well, if Hulk Hogan has a sex tape, what do you think it'd be like if Vegeta had a sex tape? Would you want to see a Vegeta sex tape? If you do, just say so. Yeah. F's in the chat if you wanted to see a Vegeta sex tape. Or if you did Rule 34 Vegeta, oh. that would be just horrifying to see. It was, it was him. He went after our guy and missed. It, our guy <laughs> didn't do no cheap shot. Don't you love that? When a guy who tried to cheap shot somebody... And our guy from back. he's the one who suffers. That is beautiful. Oh, that's the break of the game, bitch. Yes. And there it is. Sunday at 6 30. You see it in the middle? I see it. Revenge. Oh, totally revenge. Oh. Just what ESPN wanted, just what we wanted. It's the ultimate revenge when dirty fucker fighters or whatever get their comeuppance. It's right. you know, it's quite a parallel to Amber Heard in that way. Well, I mean, the reality is, you know, Notre Dame is just like the Rose Bowl. Here's something I saw uh, recently. I thought uh, it's a birthday card. I thought you all would like to see. It is a Datsun that is a birthday card. Yes, yeah, so a Datsun, that kind of little wiener hot dog. 
in a little sweater. A dachshund, it's called. A dachshund was a car that turned, the company became Nissan. A dachshund, that's the dachshund right there. What was your grandfather's dachshund? Cute little, my my grandfather had one. He named it Heidi. Why do you think he did? He loved that uh, Heidi, that uh, it was a like a children's book that became a TV movie that famously. He did it because of a famous Heidi game. I was about to say there was a famous football game whose ending got uh, cut off because of a TV movie called Heidi. It's even known since then as the Heidi Bowl. I first heard about it from this E special called 101 Cel Biggest Celebrity Oops. And for whatever reason, they counted on among their uh, ABC cutting off a uh, Monday Night Football to cut to a TV movie called Heidi. And in the middle of the Heidi, the, uh, the movie airing, they showed a little Chiron at the bottom, a proto CNN Chiron showing the final score to the game. Yeah, I was like the team that won made this big epic comeback and instead they were all watching Heidi. And here's something else. It's a window sticker in my neighborhood. You see this? It's a, uh, it looks like, a, uh, I'll turn the screen brightness down so you can see it better. It looks like the handicap signal, but no, you see, it's it looks like it's a guy in a handicap signal, a uh, handicap symbol holding a Tommy gun. Even the paralyzed can exercise their Second Amendment rights, according to this guy's car. Uh, my neighborhood isn't dangerous, but it's still fun. You know, you, you, there, there, are, there is fun to be had in the neighborhood. Much fun and much love for all of you out there. And I like to see more of it because I was feeling the love of tonight. This is right downtown. This, yeah. And here is the flask call for super chats and channel memberships. You can also go in the last chance to follow the link to my art store and drop a donation right there. Just think about that. Think about what you all are doing. And that's how you can show your support right here or right now uh, tonight if you can feel the love tonight like i've been feeling it it has been wonderful wonderful amazing amazing all of that all up all down now i'm looking over at the chat and now that means also you know gotta, now, now i'm checking my hair yes my hair has been growing back into a, a form that more people be familiar with which i like because yes i swear i'm never gonna get that kind of buzz cut I, I'm not never getting that fucking buzz cut ever again. Time for a haircut. Absolutely fucking never. It's like landscaping, shave the head. Uh, uh, just because my father's balding, he thinks I have to go su suffer shave with the him. Head. Uh, never. Shave it. Yeah. You, you, you can, I know that Mike is picking that up, but absolutely fucking never. You, you, you will all. Uh, you, I'll swear on that. You'll see that over time, like as we get more, like the Olympics being in July, you'll see. Uh, what that? Uh, I want to go confirm this because I've been guessing that the Olympics are coming up in July, but I can't say exactly. But I, I want to confirm this. All right. Oh yeah, July. Yeah, it starts in late July. All right. So we have that. I've been advertising in eighty-three ten minutes on on Peacock and NBC. Late July and it goes all the way up into August. So now days. we know. Yeah, it's the those it's six, sixteen days. those sixteen days begin in late but July. They count the, the one day's opening ceremony, one day's closing yeah. ceremony. The opening closing ceremonies, and well, my father's going to be happy about that because he always enjoys the Olympics yeah, as much as I have no involvement now. As much as Hulk Hogan enjoys, uh, you know, making a sex tape or. As a, what do you prefer, Mount Baldy or the Polish cue ball? Uh, absolutely fucking neither, because you you ain't touching my fucking hair ever again. You sleep, you sleep like a corpse. You sleep like a corpse. It's like that actor Dwight Yoakam. He was a country singer, and that cowboy hat. Don't you ever fucking take that cowboy hat off again? <laughs> um, guess what? That <laughs> that 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 is an oath I'm making to all of you out there on this channel. As now, I think we do have the right time to. Call uh, end the poll. All right. Well, Mr. Nanny is the winner of which is Hulk Hogan's best film? Sixty-nine percent of the vote is a miss is a Mr. Nanny. That is a great thing to see. And of course, don't forget about that little detail of when Hogan uh, threw the uh, when Hogan's on his motorcycle and you see a man throwing his dog into a river. He's like driving past a river or a lake or something, and there's this just a guy just throwing his dog in there. What the fuck? That's like the one of the weirdest background things to ever notice. Uh, 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 it's like uh, Caddyshack. There's a clip, I honestly remember Caddyshack, of a guy. No, no, there's a woman 
at uh, one big like party scene at night, and it's supposed to be at this swanky country club, and there's a woman <laughs> bent over, and you can see she's leaning over, and she is snorting cocaine. There's literally a woman doing cocaine in the background somewhere in Caddyshack during the big party scene where uh, Chevy Chase first sees the horny rich girl. Jay Nash, uh, hello to Jay Nash. Nice to see you here. Nice to see you around. That is great, great, great. As we are now in the middle of our last call for everybody to show their support for the channel directly with the super chats and the store donations and all that. And we just saw now with the game done, we had Arnold's famous State Farm commercial from the Super Bowl. There it was. And Jay Nash, it's great to see you here straight from Friday Night Tights. And your nice little comment you left on today's video. <laughs> it was fun, a fun, 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 fun to see that and also see you around here. And now the sense of the first time we're seeing you in the chat, let's give him, let's give Jay a new look at the Hulk Hogan we did tonight. What you gonna do when WrestleMania and Hulkamania goes wild on you, brother? Oh, yes. Train, say your prayers, eat your vitamins. Be true to yourself, true to your country, be a real American. Huh. No, and why did I pick the new Hulk Hogan tonight? Since we are on the way to WrestleMania. Well, remember, today is the anniversary. I believe it is the, all right, let's see, 10, 20. The, uh, uh, the, this, is, this would be the, uh, not the 30th, but the 27th anniversary of WrestleMania 3 that happened on this day back in 1987. The body slam heard around the world, Hogan versus Andre the Giant. The irresistible force meets the immovable object. Oh, no, wait, 37, yeah, this is, sorry, I, all right, that's a big number fuck up, it's a, this is the 37th anniversary of, uh, the yes, the 40th. Yeah. because the, this WrestleMania coming up is the 40th anniversary WrestleMania, so <laughs> that's, uh, remember, big, blatant, numerical error like that, call me on it, bring it up, and I will gl greatly, greatly, greatly uh, make a, make that correction, and Make that that, that apologize for something you actually are guilty of or that you did wrong or whatever. Yeah, that that's perfect right there. And I just gave you your excuse. No, uh, my mother may or may not have drank while pregnant with me. I know. I think she did drink coffee, uh, uh, which, which was completely told not to do. And Jay said, uh, "Remember, he actually remembers that at the time. Well, I was still would not be born for another few years, but that was a, a classic mania. I have been able to watch it since then." at the Pontiac Silverdome. And remember, Jay, uh, if you like either one of these, just follow the link to my art store in the chat. And if you donate 30, one of these two will be sent to you. Or if you like them both, donate 50 to my art store, and I will ship them both out to you first thing tomorrow morning. So thank you, thank you right there for either one of these one-of-a-kind Hulk Hogan bits. These little pieces of Hogan, they will all be yours. Yes, the Silver Dome in the beautiful Pontiac, Michigan, back in 87. It was also host to a great big Super Bowl in that decade, in the good old 1980s. Very fun, brother. Before the body slam heard around the world, which also set an attendance record of 93,000 plus people in the crowd, enjoying <laughs> the epic battle of Andre and Hogan. Which, of course, then subsequently was uh, they had the rematch where Andre won and then gave the belt over to Ted DiBiase. There's going to be a whole lot of hillbillies in the casinos tonight downtown. Can't say. Can't say. Yeah, right now there's uh, Tennessee is playing uh, in Detroit right now. Downtown basket. They're playing the March Madness that's going on. Yeah. Beautiful Pontiac, Michigan, which now is almost completely desolate because of the Silver Dome leaving. What do you think happened to Flint? Clinton was booming back in the day. Yeah, when it's G, a, when, when GM left. <laughs> that's that's a bit of a sad nadir right there. And now, 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 on uh, that note, I want to thank everyone for watching tonight. Subscribe to my channel. We'll reach 10,000 subscribers this year. Don't forget to go and become a channel member today. The memberships start at $2.99. So remember, remember all of that to either get one for yourself or gift them. And don't forget about my art store, which is the second link in the description below, where besides my artwork that's there for sale, you can commission me for artwork and also you can donate. Donations are the first thing in the store. And when you donate, that money goes directly to me. 
And if you want to go and uh, buy or commission me from outside of America, just make your purchase as a donation by adding up the prices of what you want in US dollars with another 25 US for the international shipping fee, and your items will ship immediately. And congratulations to Michigan men's ice hockey for winning their game against North Dakota tonight. Michigan won it, and now they're going to go up in the next stage of the tournament against good old Michigan State on Sunday. So until then, remember tomorrow, my shorts premiere at 5 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 and 6. My video premieres at 6.30, and I will be live again at 8. So until then, felines, slam it, lick it, suck it, and see you, Space Cowboy.